We don't, we don't live in a risk-free world. The other on the top of the hill but we've learned the whole future of farm trials themselves may be decidedly at risk. Captain Barker's not just been growing a GM crop at Lush Hill, he's got organic produce too. He's had to consider pulling out of the GM trials. I feel between a rock and a hard place on this one. Whichever way I go, I'm offending somebody. I find that a difficult one to answer this week. I have to make a decision what to do. Whichever way I go down, I shall have upset somebody. So, uh, what was the significance of drilling? This Captain Barker is not alone in his worries. The GM farm trials are being monitored by the Natural Environment Research Council. They are, they are happy they actually it had to said, drill. They yeah. actually said yeah. it had to be drilled. Yeah. They fear that because of all the public pressure and the undeniable risk of protest action, more and more farmers are starting to think that taking part in the GM trial program just isn't worth the hassle. If we can't find enough farmers willing to participate, that would certainly jeopardise the trials. So we are very keen to encourage farmers to participate uh, in the programme. But if they're going to come under the sort of pressure uh, that we are seeing at the moment, uh, clearly many of them will think twice about it. And what's your worry if that happens? Well, the consequence would be we would not have a fully validated field study. And so what impact would, would that have? We would not be able to answer the questions which the public and the government are asking of the scientific community on this issue. One of the most pressing of those questions is about the risk of resistance to antibiotics. Some crops, like this GM maize, designed to contain its own insecticide, have also been fitted with a gene that resists certain antibiotics, a cheap way of identifying them. The maize is still growing in Spain, despite official British objections that the antibiotic resistance might attach itself to bugs that cause diseases, like meningitis, making them resistant too, and harder to treat. I think one of the things that we've learned is that the precautionary principle must apply when we're um, putting in place anything which could have a significant effect on the environment. And if that can mean the, the leakage of the genetic modified part of a plant cell into bacterial um, uh, epidemics, then we have to recognise that as a very significant threat. That means there should be a moratorium on growth with only pilot sites until we gathered enough evidence and that the researchers should be required to satisfy a committee with, uh, based on the Food Standards Agency, which is really looking at the benefits and risks to human health. But human health isn't the only concern of those who worry about GM's effect on the environment. English Nature, the government's own advisers, fear the whole food chain will be at risk from the very property of GM crops that farmers are most attracted to, their potential ability to allow farmers to eradicate weeds. This is a field of conventional oilseed rape, and within this field, there are lots of weeds growing in amongst the crop. On these weeds, there are insects. They live on the weeds and on the seeds produced by the weeds. If this was a genetically modified crop, herbicide tolerant crop, it would be sprayed with a very powerful herbicide to remove all the weeds. No weeds, no insects, no birds, because the birds would have nothing to feed on at all. Monsanto, the company that developed plants that are resistant to their own brand of weed killer, insists that such fears for wildlife are unfounded. But why are their critics' fears only coming to light now with plants already undergoing farm trials? It's the job of another committee to advise the government on whether it's safe to go ahead with planting GM crops in Britain. It's called ACRE, the Advisory Committee on Releases to the Environment. ACRE too is dominated by scientists who have no basic objection to GM technology. But it does include one member from an environmental pressure group. It's almost 10 years since she asked her colleagues to look at how planting GM crops might affect the safety of Britain's wildlife. 
I can remember raising at some of the earliest meetings that I attended, which was back in 1990, possibly 1991, uh, who was going to look at the possible effects of using weed killers, using chemical agents, in conjunction with these new genetically modified crops. And did Acre say, yes, that's something we should worry about? No, Acre, it was never felt that it was part of Acre's remit, and that answer was really from uh, the Secretariat to Acre, the government department, the Department of the Environment, uh, as much as from Acre members. The civil servants, in other words. Yes, indeed. And, and they yeah. were saying, this isn't your job? Yes. In the early days, Julie used to get very frustrated because, as chairman particularly, I was saying, you know, we don't need to worry too much about this at the moment. What we've got to do is to get the baseline of safety with small things, and we'll worry about those things later on. Professor Berenger and other members did have personal worries about wildlife, but didn't push them onto the public agenda or insist they should be included in their remit. Aker's job, after all, was to look at the safety of releasing altered genes into the environment, not to help preserve the beauty of the British countryside. If GM crops meant more weed killers, the committee decided, that was something for someone else. The Advisory Committee on Pesticides, perhaps, to worry about. They've sent that problem across to the Advisory Committee on Pesticides, who do not consider that, that the effects on wildlife generally to be part of their remit. And therefore, the, the, the whole issue tends to fall between these two committees and, 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 and in the past has not been addressed adequately by either of them. Last week, the danger of key issues falling between committees was highlighted in a critical report by the Environmental Audit Committee of MPs. They said a new superbody was needed, which would also address ethical and consumer concerns. The remit of Acre has now been widened to consider wildlife. It's also now advertising for a new team of members. But will they be encouraged to ask tough questions? Would you be finding some fresh blood, some people perhaps who are cynical or suspicious of the whole technology? Well, I don't want people who are cynical. I want people who are going to do an effective job in the public interest. That's what these advisory committees are there for. And let me, let me but say... But the, the critics say that these advisory committees are full of people who basically endorse the technology, basically are sympathetic to it, and that doesn't represent the public. Well, I think people who say that, make that assertion, are wrong. Since the government came to office, we've taken action to put members in the public interest, uh, members who represent the consumer interests, on every one of our advisory committees, every single one. Later this month, the government will publish a review of the regulations that cover every aspect of GM crops and foods. Even those who've been personally involved in some of the decisions taken so far accept that changes in the system must be made. Few people now trust the government and its array of committees to do what's best for them. Aren't the days when people trusted scientists like yourself gone forever because of BSE? Yes, I think they have. And that's why I think the regulatory system has to change. But we do still need technical in a, 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 a judgment. And the snap judgments that we're getting in the headlines and from the green groups are not sufficient for public policy. Skeptical British consumers have now forced their will onto supermarkets, big food manufacturing companies, and even some farmers. The Environmental Audit Committee has predicted that it'll take the government up to 10 years to rebuild public confidence in the way they handle GM issues. In the meantime, while British shoppers demand they be given a clear choice, there are those at the top of government who continue to give it the benefit of the doubt. Do you buy GM food? Well, I eat GM food, yes. Investigating the ongoing fear of a link between CJD in humans and its animal equivalent, BBC Radio 4 questions how much we really know about BSE. Tomorrow at 8.